Thank you, Sarah Dawson, the conversation. On the first half, we dealt with situations in Burkina Faso where there's been a second coup in a year. We also dealt with the reasons why there's been a second coup and who is behind this second coup as Burkina Faso has had eight successful coups since 1960 after their independence. Right now, we go to Zambia where the former president, Ed Galungu, says he is prepared to be jailed if it is proven that he stole while in office. Lungu had noted his displeasure that he, as well as his former government officials and family members, have been subjects of investigation for crimes allegedly committed when he was president. He was particularly infuriated that state investigators on Thursday went to a piece of land that he owns to carry out investigations. In July, incumbent president, in July, President Akainde Chilema claimed that his predecessor, Edgar Lungu, purchased a luxury presidential jet for $190 million, an action he called wasteful expenditure. Uh, President Hakainde Chilema also explained that there was no retribution against Lungu's family, clarifying that his administration is only waging a fight against past, present and future corruption. Meanwhile, former President Lungu has since appealed to his successor, Hakainde Chilema, to start the process of removing his constitutional immunity from prosecution so he can clear his name. Lungu served as the sixth president of Zambia from 25th of January 2015 to 24th of August 2021. Now, joining us to discuss all of this, we have Neto Halwabala, South, uh, provincial spokesperson, Southern Province, uh, Levis Stone. We also have Michael Zulu, human rights and governance activist from Lusaka, Zambia. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen, to the conversation. All right, so I'll begin with Michael. Thank you so much, and good evening. Wonderful. Good evening. So I'll begin with you, Michael. <laughs> now, according to a notice of seizure served on the former president dated September 19, 2022, Crest Lodge was seized in terms of Section 15 of the Prohibition and Prevention of Money Laundering Act No. 14 of 2001, a law that allows for feature of property suspected to be proceeds of crime. Now, Michael, what investigations were ranted this? And tell us... What exactly these allegations are against former President Edgar Lungu? Well, f first of all, it's alleged uh, that uh, uh, the former president and his government involved in matters of corruption. And so uh, this has been uh, like a very big song since the change of government from the Lungu administration to the Hichilema government. Uh, and We've seen, uh, I think, a couple of days ago or so, uh, a lodge that was purported to belong to the former president uh, was seized. And uh, later it was discovered that uh, the lodge actually did not belong to the former president. And so there seems to be this uh, media frenzy. And, uh, uh, of late, we've seen the former president, Ed Galungu, come out in public to challenge the current president, Hakainde Hichilema, over the issue of his immunity. I must ask him to say that, according to the Zambian law, I think it's uh, Article 98, nobody is immune from criminal investigation. Uh, whether it's a former president or an incumbent president, our constitution allows for criminal investigation of every citizen. However, the president and the former president enjoy immunity, and therefore it's now incumbent upon the current president, Akainde Hichilema, to prove the allegations that are being leveled against Edgar Lungu in terms of corruption, because uh, the key to lifting Edgar Lungu's immunity solely lies in the hands of Akainde Ichilema, because according to our constitution, only the sitting president can move the motion in parliament to lift the immunity of the former head of state. And so it's a very big challenge to the current government, uh, because uh, now, uh, the former president seems to have grown wings and uh, he's out there challenging his successor to mm. say, if you have evidence against me, I'm ready for my immunity to be lifted. 
So it's incumbent now upon the current president to prove uh, whether Edgar Lungu and his government were actually corrupt. Okay, now looking at these allegations, corruption allegations against a former president. Now, Ichi Lema has talked about fighting corruption in Zambia. In April 2017, Ichi Lema was arrested and charged with treason, a move that was seen as an illegitimate act by Lungu to silence a political rival. Now, unfortunately, the same comments have been trending on Ichi Lema, who has been accused of witch hunting political opponents and retribution in his fight against corruption. So according to some posts, they say, while Ichilema is saying he's fighting corruption, he seems to be fighting just a political opposition. Has that really been the case? Well, you know, the politics of uh, Zambia are not different from the politics of many other African countries. And obviously, uh, in the past few months, we've seen members of the former ruling party now in the opposition uh, being cited on cases of corruption. Uh, uh, arrests have been uh, made. I think we saw some monies being recovered, which obviously tells you that, uh, yes, uh, uh, there has been mismanagement of the country's resources. But, you know, corruption cases, especially involving high-level criminals, are very, very difficult to prove. And so uh, that is why it's seeming that the current government is shooting in the dark where allegations of corruption are concerned. Because what we've been seeing is that the Anti-Corruption Commission, which is the main body charged with investigating corruption in the country, has been coming out in the media to announce arrests of individuals. But since the coming in of the new government, we have not seen anybody being prosecuted or being found guilty of corruption. And so there are allegations on the streets, obviously, to say maybe the, the corruption cases are silent being because uh, people are alleging, some people, obviously some sectors are alleging that it could be connected to crimes committed by the previous government. Uh, a good example of this is uh, the former uh, government gazetted a water recharge area, a reserve forest, mm. the Forest 27. And this was shared uh, literally amongst the elite. You know, the, the mostly uh, uh, people with political uh, positions. Okay. Uh, and so when the current government was in opposition, this was a huge campaign promise to say, we are going to bring back, we are going to regazette Forest 27 because it's a strategic, uh, uh, it's a strategic forest for water recharge and for, you know, climate issues. Uh, they came into government and the story died. Uh, okay. Forest 27 is still being, you know, uh, taken over. Construction is still go going on. And uh, the people are still owning uh, uh, the property in Forest 27. So it's the whole, uh, for lack of a better word, there is a huge circus where the fight against corruption in Zambia is concerned. And okay. Th Thank you, Michael. I, I'd like to bring in Neto from Livingstone. Uh, Neto, while in opposition, uh, President Hichilema vigorously campaigned against what he called rampant corruption by Edgar Lungu, whom he bit by a landslide in last August's general elections. How can the government address his case without making it uh, look like a witch can't? Or are there legitimate grounds to go... Uh, to, to, to bring uh, former President Lungu to justice? Well, thank you very much. But I must hasten to mention that you see, I think the, the former ruling party or the head of the state, the former head of state, he knew that whatever he was doing while in the presidency was illegal. And if you remember in 2015, somewhere there, he hurriedly amended the constitution to change the procedure on how to lift the former head of state's immunity. 
it is and it, it is not easy the way it was in the previous to remove the former head of state's immunity because he realized that it would be very easy this time that's why he's uh, trying to play politics by challenging the the, the the sitting government that prosecute me if you feel the allegation against me are valid because he knows that it is not an overnight uh, procedure for the head of the state for the former head of state to his immunity to be removed so it is a complicated way of dealing the issue of the the the, the corruption mm. i'm happy that my colleague he raised an issue of forest number 27 which is a very good case to cement on what i'm saying the forest uh, 27 was uh, gazetted by the former head of state because the land act is very clear it says land belongs to the president meaning he has the right to change the use of any land. He can change it to anything. And it is that clause that he used to make sure that before those plots were given out, he made sure that he followed the procedure to degazette it. That's why it is not easy. Now, answering your question, we as a government, we are doing everything possible to follow the procedure so that we get at him. What he is trying to do is trying to play politics and create an impression as if he is innocent. The fact of the matter is that what he had done in the past seven years when he was the head of state is clear for everyone to see that he plundered the resources. And that's why the people of Zambia rejected him. Unfortunately, he was smart, if I were to use that way, together with his cabinet, to make sure that they amend the constitution to protect their thieving so that even when they are out of power, it won't be easy to fight and get to hold at those who plundered the resources. So that's why he's bragging like that. But I think as a government, we are closing up. We have new uh, leadership at the deck. We have new leadership at anti-corruption, and they are putting everything in place so that whatever was stolen from the people of Zambia is recovered, not using shortcuts, but following the right procedure, okay. despite of the complicated route right. they created. I'm, I'm glad that the government plans to go through the right procedure, but there have been fears that the case against Lulu could polarize the country and stir up anger. I mean, if you take South Africa, for example, with the prosecution of Jacob Zuma, don't you think that there will be a polarization within the country and stirring up anger? Come again, come again. I said there have been fears that this case that is going on against the former president Edgar Lungu could polarize, that's divide the country and stir up anger. Uh, don't you think that's going to be the situation? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so because these people they were not stealing from any individual or members of UPND. They were stealing from the people of Zambia. And every Zambian who knows that their resource Neto, can you hear us? We are plundered by these people cannot take offense when the government what was stored. Okay, All we right. seem to have some connection uh, issues with NATO. Uh, let's bring in Mr. Zulu. Now, looking at uh, Zambia's track records, there's always been a debate on the culture of prosecution of past presidents, starting with uh, Kenneth Kaunda, the first uh, Republican president who has, all, who has been accused of having money hidden in offshore accounts. Uh, Zambia, looking at Zambia politics, uh, they always had a predecessor and incumbent a rivalry. What are your thoughts on this? Or is it just plain politics? Well, I think uh, you're right to say when, uh, whenever a president leaves office in Zambia, uh, there is issues that are raised. We saw the first president, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, being prosecuted by Frederick Chilula and being accused of uh, 
uh, amassing or stealing from State House. Uh, later, it was discovered that uh, Kenneth Kaunda had less than $10,000 in his account or anything. So it's a typical case of uh, 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 African politics. However, you know, in the recent past, for Zambia, Zambia has been a litmus test in terms of uh, plunder of national resources. Every time the Auditor General produces uh, the AG's report, there is theft of public resources, which tells you that corruption is very rife in Zambia. And the most unfortunate thing is that the corruption in Zambia is being aided and abated by people in the leadership bracket. And that is why it's uh, the case of corruption now against Ed Galungu, like uh, uh, the, uh, the other colleague here from Zambia said, yeah. uh, the case against Ed Galungu is going to be difficult to prosecute because uh, when politicians are stealing from the people, they use uh, legal means. And so the public becomes guinea pig. And in the end, it's the public that loses out. So it's unfortunate, you know, that the systems continue being abused, you know, by politicians and those in leadership, all for the uh, for selfish benefit. Okay, but Nacho, do you, that is do you why think the prosecutions will be people successful? People are calling for law. Nacho, do you think the prosecutions will be successful? Quickly, do you think that at the end of all this, uh, prosecution will be successful? Well, the, it, it's sure, all have, in the hands I of the, the president, the current president, Hakainde Hichilema, because now the ball is in his hands whether to move the motion to remove Edgar Lungu's immunity or not. All right, thank you very much, Michael. Neto wanted to say something, so I'll just lie quickly say that. Neto. Yes, what I was about to say was I was trying to answer your question on whether we are very sure that this fight against corruption will be successful. My response is very positive, yes, but it will take a bit of time because we need to find a way of trying to undo what they did. As my previous speaker, colleague from Zambia, put it, that look, these guys, they were very smart. They had to legalize giving. So when you are fighting such a system that had legalized the thieving, you need also to make sure that you, un you untie certain clauses so that you are able to move forward. But I'm very sure because we have a very dedicated team at the anti-corruption and also DEC that we are going to close up. But we know that whatever was stolen from the people of Zambia will be recovered and there will be no division because the common denominator right. is the public N Neto, process. I, I, I like your optimism and I hope that definitely that justice is done, especially when it comes to corruption allegations, especially for the people of Zambia. Thank you so much, Neto, for joining us. Halua Bala for joining us on the conversation and Michael Zulu for joining us on the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.